Hey everybody. Today we're doing some data wrangling in R using the pivot wider command. This is useful when a data frame has observations spread across multiple rows. Remember, according to the principles of tidy data, variables should be columns and observations should be individual rows rather than multiple rows. Of course, data sets in the wild that you'll find in the wild frequently don't observe this rule. In this vid, I'm going to look at two different data sets. First of all is the FQA data set, which I've um, downloaded from the Floristic Quality Assessment website that you can see by Googling. I've done a little preliminary data wrangling on this. The, um, this is a good example of a non-tidy data set. So the person that designed this decided that they would just put the different things that they're interested in in the first column. So where did they do their assessment? When did they do it? Um, what is the number of total species that they observed in this region and so on. And then they put the values in the second column. This is pretty natural, I think, from the data entry perspective, but it's not in keeping with our principles of tidy data. In particular, if we had multiple data sets like this, it wouldn't be so easy to combine them. Um, and because it's in a non-standard format, it wouldn't be so easy to do data analysis with them. So let's convert this to a wider format using pivot wider make this look tidy. What we're, what we're envisioning here is that each of these variables is now going to be a column name and we're going to have just one row for each of these individual values. So let's make sure to save our results as a new data frame pivot wider. I'm sorry FQA wide. The command we're going to use is pivot wider. This is in the dplyr package. You see I've already loaded up tidyverse which includes dplyr. Like all functions in the dplyr package, it's going to take a data set as its first input and give back a data set at the end. This makes it compatible with the pipe. I'll use the pipe in the second example I do here. Once you've specified the data frame, there are two primary arguments that you need. First of all, we have to say where the variable names are coming from. Remember, pivot wider is useful when the names of a variable are the values in a column. So here, these are all different variable names. So names from equals variable. Like all the verbs in the dplyr package, you don't need quotes around your variable names here. Next, we have to say where our values are coming from. And this is values from. And here, the values of each of these variables are coming from the second column, which I've conveniently labeled value. All right, so let's take a look at this. Let's see what we got. There we go, just what we'd like. The data frame now consists of just one row. There really is just one observation in this data set. If I had many, many, many different um, floristic quality assessments, it would now be pretty easy to combine them into one big data frame. The second example that I wanna look at is the blocks data set. There it is. This is taken from um, Dunn and Smith's General Linear Models with Examples in R, a book that I definitely recommend. Here we have a block stacking experiment where 25 different children were each asked to stack a bunch of cubical and cylindrical blocks. We have um, their age noted here. They've each done two trials. We've taken note of the number of blocks that they stacked and the amount of time that they took. So here each observation is being viewed as a single trial, not just a single trial, but a single trial for, the, for an individual child with a single kind of block. And that makes sense. We could have a different perspective on this, however. For instance, instead of viewing child A, child one cube as separate from trial, child A, child one cylinder, perhaps this was all done at once and the child was just given a bunch of cubes and cylinders. Maybe what we would really like is a column here for the number of cubes that they stacked and the number of cylinders they stacked, the amount of time they took for the cubes and the amount of time they took for the cylinders. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, let's, um, let's save this. How about blocks wide? And we'll start off more or less the same way. This time, let's use the pipe operator. That's gonna pass blocks as the first argument to, into the next um, command I type in. So pivot wider. Again, we have to specify where the names are coming from and where the values are coming from. So names from, which does need to be spelled correctly, of course, 
So in this case, I want to view shape as giving me two different variables. I want to have things for the number and time that the child, the number of blocks that the child stacked that were cubical, the number of blocks that they stacked that were cylindrical, and the time that they took for each. So my names from here is going to be shape. And in this case, I actually have two different variables that I want values from. Um, I want to have the number of blocks that they shape, they stock, that they stacked from each of those shapes and the time they took. Notice that age will be the same for each. I don't need to specify that here. So I want values from, and in this case, I want the values to be two different things. I want number and time, and that should do it. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so in this case, I now have four new columns. The number of cubes that were stacked, the number of cylinders that were stacked, the time that they took to stack the cubes, and the time they took to stack the cylinders. Notice that these other variables still just have a single column. For instance, the age has not been split up into multiple columns, and of course, neither have child or trial. So this is useful, for instance, if we wanted to see the difference between the number of cubes and the number of cylinders they stacked. Let's take a second and just do that. Let's, um, let's modify blocks wide. And what we'll do is we'll take blocks wide and we will pipe it in. Let's do a mutate command. So let's add a new column to this that's gonna be called difference. And difference is going to be the difference between the number of cubes that they stacked minus the number of cylinders that they stacked. We can take another look at that. You can see that we've got that new column here. Mostly positive values. Maybe that's not surprising that the children stacked more of the cubical blocks than the cylindrical blocks. And then, of course, we could, for instance, get a plot with this. Let's take a second and do that. Let's take blocks wide. And um, let's see here, let's do difference. And how do we wanna do this? Maybe let's do a, um, a histogram. And in this case, who, let's see, it's a number that we're gonna be um, talking about. So maybe the bin width should be one. And let's get a little bit of boundary color on here just to be able to tell the bars apart. Be pretty basic about that. And um, let's get a minimal theme on this. Okay, so that's a reasonable looking histogram. I don't think I love the labels on the x-axis. I might go back later and change those with scale x continuous. I don't think I'll worry about it too much right now. I'd rather do one more um, wrangling example with this blocks data set. So let's go back to this original and let's take another perspective on it. Instead of viewing each, um, instead of viewing the individual trials with the individual children, now let's just view the children as being the unique modifier. So this time I'm only gonna want 25 rows. In the last example, I had 50 because I had the children and the trials. So this will be a slightly different, uh, slightly different syntax, but by now you can probably guess it. How about blocks wide er? <laughs> we'll go with that because this one's even wider than the other one. And we'll start with blocks. And we will put it into pivot wider. And this time, let's see here. The thing that we want to do differently is that this time we want to take our names from two different variables, both from trial and from shape. So this time I'm viewing trial here as being a variable name. And name and values from, it's gonna be the same. I want number and time. Let's take, let's take a look at this really quick. Okay, 
So now, as advertised, I only have 25 rows, one for each of the children. The age is just specified once for each of the children. But now, I have, um, I believe, eight new columns. I have for number and time, so the number of blocks they stacked and the time they took to stack them. I have the trial number, one or two, and I have the sort of blocks that were stacked, cylinder or cube, um, again, for each of these children. And that's potentially useful for some applications. One thing that I want to mention here, the, very, the column names are starting to get pretty ugly here. For instance, as I look at these, I, um, it's not necessarily obvious to me if I haven't been actually doing the data wrangling in real time, what this one and two stand for. If you look back at the help file here, there's some um, useful um, optional arguments that we can include here to help fix that. I want to focus on the names glue argument and just try and make this look just a little bit better. Names glue lets you specify the column names manually according to some formula. So I'm going to just go back up to this previous command that I have for blocks wider and add the names glue argument. And again, here we just need to specify programmatically how we want these variable names to be created. So how about um, I want trial first and let's go ahead and use a dot here. And what I'd like to have happen is for R to take whatever trial number is being read off of this column. And so the way that I denote that is by putting this brace. And so when I have trial in that brace, it's not going to just put the word trial. It's going to actually take the value from this column. Okay. Um, after that, let's have an underscore and then let's have the shape that's being used. And then finally, I would like to have um, the actual, to, I'd like to know whether it's number or time that's being used. So if you see here, I have number and time at the beginning of these variable names. I'd like to keep that. And the way that I specify that is with dot value, referring to the names from these, um, these values that we're given, or rather values from, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at this. And now my variable names look just a little bit better. Trial one, trial two, cylinder, and number.